the nation's favourite antiques experts. I just love it. Behind the wheel of a classic car. It's fast. It's a race. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Could be tricky. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. Oh, high five. There will be worthy winners. Mind blowing. And valiant losers. Could have been worse. Will it be the high road to glory? Oh! Or the oh! slow road to disaster? Oh no. This <laughs> is the Antiques Road Trip. Oh yes. Hello. Two stars of the Antiques Firmament are out once more for their last trip together. What's that? Morning is broken. Uh-oh. Morning has broken is it <laughs> like the first morning. I can't remember the words. Blackbird has spoken like the first word. <laughs> And the word is that Tim Methurst and Christina Trevanion are, as usual, full of the joys. And who wouldn't be? Look at the cow party. It's like the countryside is getting married. That's true. <laughs> the poetic pair set forth from Emsworth and are travelling the B roads of the southwest before crossing the Welsh marches to the final auction in Cardiff. I've enjoyed everything. The car, the company, the antiques. Which one? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. <clears throat> the... What comes first in that? The company, there the car, the antiques. I've enjoyed the lot, you know. <laughs> uh, it has been fun, hasn't it? It has. Yes, it has. I can't tell a porky pie. Tim's piggy was filled with £200 at the start and after the last auction is now stuffed with £342.76. So, well done. While Christina's wiener was also fattened up last time and is now positively bursting with £857.54. and p. Never fear. Look what I remembered. Oh, can I have it back? No, oh. definitely not. Oh, right. <laughs> Who will be Fortune's fool this time as they hunt for treasure in the Cotswolds to take to that last auction in Cardiff? Having dropped off Christina, Tim's bound for Longmaston in Shakespeare country, just southwest of Stratford. Forsooth, here's our first shop today, the Barn Antique Centre. To be or not to be? Nice buns. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tim. Hello, I'm Laura. Nice, nice to, meet, nice to you. meet you. I'm Tim too. Let's get cracking. All that glistens may not be gold, but some of it may be. Nope, I have no idea where he's going either. Presumably he'll come up for air somewhere. Maybe now. Oh, yes. Laura, these are great, aren't they? They're beautiful. I really, yes. really like them. They're inkwells, but they look like a pyramid of bubbles they that do. if you just touched one, it would it'll... pop <laughs> and yeah. it'll tumble away. Yeah. yeah. Have you got a loop I can borrow? I, I do. want to have a close look at the silver hallmark, yes. if that's all right. Thank you. See, my, my gut reaction was that they were late Victorian or early 20th century, but looking at the label, the... Um, Owner is called 1979, which oh, is a, the yeah, which yeah. is a lot later than I'd imagined. Yeah, they are a 70s hallmark. That's interesting. 1979, he's dated yeah. it. Yeah. What have we got on the price? 65. 65. What your very very best? Okay, uh, the very very best I can go to 55. 55. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what I think? I might go for them. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Thank Perfect. you very much. Lovely. Thank Thanks you. very much. Without further ado, thank you. he's off. Broadway is the pretty Cotswolds village that Christina's bound for this morning. She's here to learn how, in the darkest hours of wartime Britain and the decade that followed, a government initiative for furnishing people's homes sprang from the ashes of the Blitz. And to see the work of the man who pioneered that scheme and whose work characterised the interiors of British homes into the 1950s and beyond, Gordon Russell. At the design museum named after him, Christina is meeting a Royal College of Art professor. Stand by. Ah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You must be Jeremy. I'm Jeremy Myerson. Let's go and have Ooh, a look. Oh, it's going to look okay. exciting. In 1904, when Russell was 12, his family moved to Broadway, bought the semi-derelict Ligon Arms Hotel and set about restoring it. It was a team of people really doing up pieces of furniture, putting oak panelling all over the hotel, creating one of the great country house hotels. Mm -hmm. And he learnt on the job. He watched craftsmen 
as they worked with different materials. He was interested in making, and that is how he learned his trade. 1914 was a defining moment for Russell and his generation. Gordon enlisted, he served in the trenches, he wrote in his army book where it said profession, designer of furniture. He had never designed a stick of furniture in his life, but it was a prediction of what he was going to do. He really focused on the furniture workshop that was in the hotel. And this grew and grew, and a lot of well-heeled American guests of the hotel, at the end of their stay, they used to ask to buy the furniture that was in their rooms. Oh, brilliant. Most people take um, a postcard. <laughs> most people take a postcard. And he suddenly had a furniture-making business. But Russell was interested in mass-producing furniture, and the war delivered that opportunity. In a time of shortages, nationalisation and rationing, the utility furniture scheme was introduced by the government to provide functional furnishings for those who had been bombed out and for newlyweds setting up home. Coupons were issued, as they were for food and clothing. Gordon Russell was involved from the outset and was appointed chairman of the design panel, bringing his Cotswold School style to the approved designs. Gordon Russell recognises an opportunity not just to meet a national emergency, but also to address his own ambitions to introduce a more honest, simple, modern approach to design. And this is the result. These are the results. Yeah. And if we look inside the drawers, you can see oh, the most yeah. wonderful, plans. very simple plans. This was sent to over 700 furniture workshops all over the country. Wow, that many? so that furniture could be made close to the point of need. And what he did was he introduced a completely alien, European, Scandinavian approach to design, mm. which was pragmatic, which was geometric, was simple. He is really orchestrating the, the complete state-controlled production of furniture in wow. Britain during the war. So he is actually setting a trend. He is. The utility furniture scheme lasted until 1952. Gordon Russell's mission, as he described it, had been to teach the machine manners <laughs> and produce affordable, useful and attractive furniture. But in his twilight years, in the 1970s, he revisited his arts and crafts training and handmade some beautiful pieces, like this one in the museum. So here it is. Aha, this is La Table. In his own mind, Gordon Russell was back in the Ligon Arms in the Cotswolds yeah. in, in Broadway, yeah. working at his father's side, mm. refurbishing pieces of furniture and restoring them. So was he recognised in his lifetime? He was knighted, um, he was given the CBE, he got involved in design policy for British Rail when it was nationalised, he was in charge of the design of postage stamps. He was the ultimate establishment figure, but he never forgot his craft background in the Cotswolds. Mm. And at the end of his career, he came full circle and was producing large-scale pieces like this one made of you. Well, what a fascinating chap. It has been so interesting to learn about him. So thank you so much, Jeremy. It's a great pleasure. Hugely enjoyed learning about Gordon Russell. What a, what a chap. Next stop on Tim's final campaign is Stowe on the World. A pretty Cotswolds town with an enormous market square where, at the height of the wool trade, 20,000 sheep might be bought and sold. <laughs> Tara Antique Centre is Tim's destination, and as ever, he's not hanging about. It's a lovely manor house with three floors stocked by 30 dealers, so loads to see, even on bottom shelves. He does spend a lot of time on the floor, though, doesn't he? Oh, well, there we go, wear his knees out on his trousers. Now, I really love this paperweight, mainly because it's got a lion in it, and I love lions. But this paperweight probably dates to around 1850 to 1870, something like that. So it's quite early on in paperweight manufacture, which was probably started in the early 19th century. And I like this one because it's got a lovely little colourful background, but with that lion boldly on it as well. The lion is made of sulphide, and that's a process that was developed throughout the 19th century, and it made bog standard glassware quite exciting. And on it as well, you can see where it was held when it was made and the bits of glass that were snapped off. And it's quite rough, but lovely. It's priced up at 28 pounds. Doesn't seem expensive to me. There are lots of paperweight collectors out there. And I think because of its age and just the charm of it, I think it might do quite well in auction. 
time to convene with Karen. Um, you've got £28 on it. What do you think the best price on that would be? The trade would be three on that. So okay, 25. 25. 25. Do you know what? Perfect. I'll take it. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Can I leave it with you? Yes, and I'll carry course. on looking around and then come back to you. Okay, Perfect. thank you. Thanks very much. Meanwhile, it's Westward Ho for Christina to Winchcombe and a first opportunity to divest herself of some of her cash mountain at Winchcombe Antique Centre. Pretty. Too cheap, 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 cheap for you. £857. Hope you don't mind me mentioning it. <laughs> oh, that's quite cool, isn't it? Look at that. Ooh, I do like an open cabinet. Look at that. I've not seen one of these before. OK, Negretti and Zambra. Very good name. Made optical lenses and scientific equipment. But this is bizarre. So it says patent 6276, 1950s. And it's a barometer. Observe direction of wind. Had beans for lunch. Read barometer and note whether rising, falling or steady. Set dials accordingly and the forecast appears where indicated. Stormy. Much rain. Fine. Over a large area. <laughs> £110. Well, that's not a million miles away, is it? That's quite cool. I don't know what it would make at auction, but I think it's quite fun. This looks like the cabinet to be in. Do you know, I think she's right. We'll leave her to ponder the barometer and see how the wind blows over back in Stow in the Wold. Yep, it's a teapot. Generally used for tea. You could fit many cups of tea in there. What an interesting teapot. And it's quite old as well. It's got lots of different applied decorations on here. And I think they probably tell a story. And it's got this wonderful agate-type slipware decoration, which sets it apart from your normal bog-standard teapot. But on here, the applied decoration, there's a bust of a man. He's probably Earl Grey, now synonymous with his favourite bergamot-infused tea, but also the Prime Minister responsible for the Reform Act of 1832 and the abolition of slavery throughout the British Empire. Good egg. What have we got in here? £68. That's not too bad. It's the sort of thing I'd buy for myself, so I hope someone else would like it. Let's see what Karen thinks. Karen, I found this lovely teapot. It is nice. Um, now, I notice there is some damage, but you have, you have noted that. So yes. I'm just wondering, what's your best price for it? 55. It's a deal. Thank you. Thank 55 you. it is. There we are. 80 pounds, please. 25 for the paperweight and 55 for the teapot. Time for a brew. Ah. Mine's a lapsang souchong. But it's not tea time yet in Winchcombe. Oh, no. Christina's still rummaging in that cabinet. These are really lovely. This is a pair of table lighters. So you'd have these on your table and you'd have them permanently lit so the gentleman could have their after-dinner cigar or whatever it is they wanted to take. Absolutely gorgeous, solid silver by the looks of it. Probably actually weighted at the bottom, but really, really nice. Yes, there is a little bit of damage to them, but to collectors, to have the pair and to have them in not too bad condition is really quite a lovely thing to have. If these are under £100, I will be taking them, because they're really rather lovely. Gosh, lots to go and talk about. Time to find owner Richard. Richard! Hello. Hello, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Found yourself a good book. Yes. Oh, what is it? You've probably got it already. Popular scientific recreation. Well, it's yeah, instant cure for insomnia. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> now, I've been wandering around your lovely shop and I found these things okay. that I quite like. Yeah. So, they are the Walker and Hall. Good. Yes. Um, 40 quid. 40 quid? For the pair. Okay. Ha very happy at that. That's cool. And then 110 yeah. on the Negretti and Zambra barometer. What um, were you thinking? Oh, I don't know. It's your shop. You tell me. I don't know. Okay, 20 quid. What the very think? best death would be probably 70 quid on that. So 70, 80, 90, 100, 110 uh -huh. for total. Yes. Should we, should we say 100? 120? No, that's going we'll the wrong keep it 110 way. then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right then, 110 pounds. Now it's time for tea. Taxi for Trevanian, methinks. There they are. Uh, Where are we going? We're going down here. That way? This way. This, this way, are you sure? Well. There are worse places to be lost than the Cotswolds. Nighty-night. 
So what's your plan today? Uh, plan is buy some old stuff and make loads of money. <laughs> yeah, that's about the size of it. Oh, look, look cows. the cows. Oh, they look like elephants, don't they? They do. They're yeah. big old cows, aren't they? Hi, baby calf. Oh, cute. Yeah, I'd love to spend it all day in a field, munching mm. away on the grass, enjoying life. Sounds perfect. Yeah. Yesterday, our cud chewer was attracted by a brass barometer. Fine, over a large area. <laughs> and a pair of silver table lighters, but she's still left with a big fat £747.54p. While our young bull went for the china, a large agateware style teapot. You could fit many cups of tea in there. And a glass paperweight. And a pair of silver and bubble glass inkwells, leaving him with £207.76. Oh, can we swap cars with this guy? He doesn't look like he's on Can we swap? swap? Oh, please, can we swap? <laughs> oh, this is going to swap! <laughs> oh, oh, this is going to be late for work. <laughs> and so are you. Get a move on. And your car's nicer. <laughs> Having dropped off Tim, Christina's first pit stop of the day is in Tetbury. I'm going to this shop with about 740 great British pounds burning a hole in my pocket, so let's hope I can spend it. The Emporium in question is Trilogie Antiques. Three floors presided over by Linda. There must be plenty to tempt our magpie in this classy dealer's collective, filled with beautiful things. <laughs> and the odd, ugly thing. Right, what's upstairs? The ladder to heaven? This is amazing. This is quite extraordinary. So what we've got here is a what looks to be a reproduction print. This amazing, wacky carved frame, which has got down here the terror of the desert. Gosh, what's this going to be? It's almost like a transitional Art Nouveau turn of the century, I'd say maybe 1900, 1910. You've got all these wonderful carved motifs on the frame. I've never seen anything quite like it. You've got a scarab beetle here. You've got the sun breaking through the cloud here. You've got sphinxes. You've got pyramids. You've got palm trees. I mean, it's everything that we would think of being in Egypt. And yet, I think this is an English frame. So it's a real kind of clash of cultures. It's quite, it's quite phenomenal. £85. Pounds. That doesn't seem unreasonable, does it? Let's go and talk to the shopkeeper about this. Coming through. Whoops. Tell me when it's safe to look. <laughs> I always have to choose the biggest thing in the shop, don't I? Apparently Ooh. you do. I found this on the top floor. Right. Now, does this belong to you? No, it doesn't. It belongs to Caroline. Is Caroline nice? She's very nice. Oh, is she? Yes. Oh, OK, well, it's got a ticket on there, obviously, with a description and the price tag yeah. there. Is that £85? At least, I hope it's £85. I hope it's not... It's 8500 Ah, no. right. <laughs> Shall I... Do you want to put it back upstairs? No, it's all right, we'll keep it. Um, no, it's 85 so I could do it for 70 70 Yeah. Marvellous. I'm very happy at that. What? Linda, you had me fooled there. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, bye. Bye, now. bye. Bye. See you later, alligator. <laughs> Time to follow Tim. He's off north to the largest town in the Cotswolds, Sarancester, where by the Middle Ages the wool trade was booming, lining the coffers of the church, landowners and wealthy merchants. The golden fleece of the Cotswold breeds allowed these pre-Reformation super-rich to donate lavishly to the building and decoration of local churches in places like Chipping Camden and North Leach. The parish church of St John the Baptist in Sirencester is the largest of these wool churches and Tim's meeting warden, Simon Smith, to see how sheep have left their mark. First stop, the tower. Just 204 steps, just as well you're young. Is it far now? <laughs> oh, what there a we are. view. There's Sirencester. Wow. So looking further north, up towards Birdlip and the mm. main road, there have been far fewer trees, the odd woodland, but all those hedgerow trees and clumps would probably not have been there. And white dots everywhere. And white dots everywhere. Wool was something we could sell, export, tax, and also we could turn into a better quality material. And that's what built this church. 
trade and a love of God. Now, how many steps were there down again? There were 204 up. Right. But there were rumoured to be more on the way down. OK. So we'll see you <laughs> Let's at the bottom. Go. Yeah, I feel it's going to feel like 2004 again. Right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We can sit here and soak up the atmosphere. Oh. This opulent parish church is like a cathedral, and the ostentatious giving of wealthy local worthies is embedded in the very architecture of the building. While we're sitting here, I've spotted these figures above the pillars with armorials. Mm -hmm. Do they represent certain people? They represent definite people, mm -hmm. people who contributed. Russell was advisor to the king, to Henry VIII. He was with him at the Field of the Cloth of Gold, mm. very wealthy and powerful. And then gradually, as you go back, there's a set further on with three silver greyhounds, mm. and that was the Archibalds, who had a small manor house in Cirencester. I think the greyhounds, they held the manor from the crown in return for providing three greyhounds when the king came hunting in the oh, forest right. here. And then further back, people haven't got coats of arms. They are sort of marks, and they're, they're wool marks, so they'd have been wool traders contributing. So you go from the aristocracy to minor gentry to humble tradesmen, so a complete range. Mm. But the more humble sort, the rear, mm -hmm. the flash ones at the front, not quite the way Christ would have wanted no. it. So they'd have given money to this church, partly because they thought they ought to, partly to carry favour with God, because that's how they thought God worked, mm -hmm. partly to make a statement about themselves, and partly back for community. Local benefactors paid for the church's magnificent early 15th century tower, and the bells have been ringing here since 1499. The full ring of 12 bells is being rung by Peter Holden and his team. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. It almost seems effortless, though, watching. That's the skill. Yeah. And what happens if you don't let go? If you hang on to it or your foot gets looped up, there's um, several tonnes of brass, bronze, going to carry you to the roof. Wow. Yeah. Oh, dear. Hey, really? Will Tim end up dangling from the rafters? This one's down, right, so okay. if you pull it, it swings. If you pull it a little bit more... Oh, yes. You can do that. I've yes. always wanted to do this. <laughs> Go on, then. I might take up bell ringing. Look at that. That's it. <laughs> Time to graduate to That's... some teamwork. Um, yeah, I'll just get a box, I think. There we go. Wait for it. Keep oh. it down. Up, down, keep them there. Oh, I see. It's like a... OK. Yeah. Gently. OK. There's a lot more involved there. It looks <laughs> oh, so yeah. easy, doesn't it? So if, if, if the rest of the band would like to... Uh, Oh, we're going to take part. We'll, we'll, we'll ring, you can ring. How exciting. So the idea is that you try and make your hands come down just after Joanne's. Just after, OK. So, and then I'll be watching will... you, Joanne. And it might sound like it sounded earlier. OK, <laughs> let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Show you what. A full peel can take three hours to ring, so we'll leave Tim to it. Ding dong, eh? Meanwhile, with the wind at her back and in her hair, Christina's en route for the outskirts of Stroud, where at the picturesque sounding Salmon Springs trading estate, her last shop is the Malt House Collective. This vast emporium houses 50 craftspeople and antique dealers, so good luck. Yeah, I rushed to get here before Tim, and I've been here for 20 minutes, and he's still not turned up. I don't know where he's gone to. Oh, he'll turn up like a bad penny. He's a coin expert, after all. It's a little ruby and diamond half a eternity ring. Now, I always get people crying out to me for ruby and diamond eternity rings because, of course, ruby, for ruby wedding anniversaries when you've been married for 40 years, and they just don't seem to be particularly readily available on the market. So you've got these really rather lovely alternating rubies and diamonds. That's marked up at £69. That is not a bad price at all for that. Coloured stones at the moment are incredibly popular at auction anyway. We're talking rubies, we're talking sapphires, we're talking emeralds. And, of course, 
rubies themselves are the red version of sapphires. They're both what's known as corundum. So that's £69. I don't think that's a bad price at all. Quite like that. Hmm. Hmm. She does like a shiny thing. Now, what's happened to our erstwhile bell ringer? Perhaps the 204 steps did him in. Oh, no, there he is, look. Here he is, on his way now. Uh-oh. There's no time for another shop. Hi there. Hey, hello. Hello. You. Almost walked straight past you, then. <laughs> Do you mind if I have a look around? Yeah, feel free. Excellent. Thanks very much. Ah, coins. At last, I found some coins. Excellent. Right, I'm going to have a look around, and I'll come back and have a look at those. But you have a rendezvous with Christina. Uh. Hello! You're meant to be in Stroud. Do you know, I just love stumbling across an antique centre. Just on the off chance. And it's just nice, I feel instantly at home. Do you know what? I might even just have a little cup of tea. Mm. Well, since you're here, what do you fancy? We've got so many different coins here. We've got Roman, we've got Greek, we've got Byzantine, Tudor, Stuart. Oh, there's just so many. Oh, I like the look of that one. Got a James I shilling. Now that's a good piece of history. The first Stuart King. Might have a look at that. Can I have a look in this cabinet, please? Yeah, sure. Might the look of one of these coins. Thank you. Nope. What was your name, sorry? Oh, Will, nice Will. to meet you. Will. Tim, nice to meet you. Which one would you have a look at? Um, just the shilling on the end there, if that's all right. Yeah, sure, I'll grab that Thank one you. you. Great, do you mind if I have a little look? Yeah, feel cabinet? free. Thank you. I love the coinage of James I. You know, when you think of James I, you think of 1605, you think of the gunpowder plot, and this coin potentially could have been minted in 1605. I find that amazing. With early coins, the mintage process was by hand, so you would have had someone in 1605, around that date, actually minting this or striking it. And what they would have done is they would have had a piece of metal and literally just hammered the design by hand. And so what you get when you buy a coin like this is a piece of silver that's 400 odd years old, but you're also getting a portrait of a King of England and Scotland. It's quite nice to find coins of this period with a strong portrait. Sometimes when they were hand struck, the portraits didn't come through very well. I just love it. I need to have a look at the price, don't I really? Okay, 115 pounds. Ooh. Will. Can I give this to you to hang on to for the moment and we might be able to yeah, do sure, something with it? Thank you. I'll come and find you in a moment. Yeah, but no if I carry on having a look, is that all right? Well, whether it is or it isn't, you're going to do it. <laughs> Meanwhile, how's Christina doing back in Stroud? Look at that. Look at that. What does that say? William IV, fine example of gentleman's dressing table mirror. Three discreet jaws, fine carving circa 1840. Oh, but William IV if it's 1840, is it? You were taught your kings and queens in my day. William was succeeded in 1837 by Victoria. It's just got such great proportions. So often you see these and they're quite tiny and you're sort of trying to see where you are in the mirror. And what I particularly love is you've got these three little secret drawers in here, very discreetly tucked away in this frieze here. So not everybody, of course, on first glance would know that that's a drawer, so you can keep all your secrets in there, if you had any secrets to keep, of course. I think that's gorgeous. It's in great condition as well, £130. That does not seem like a bad price at all. Right, OK, I'm going to take my ring and see if we can do some negotiating on those two items. Shelley's on the desk today. Hello. Right, come on, then. You look like you found something. Well, I have. This little ring here, which yep. I think is an absolute little sweetie. Yeah. Um, and there's also a mirror just around the corner as well. On the mirror, I know the best price the dealer would do on that, an absolute best, is going to be around the sort of 100, 110 mark. On okay, that well, let's, one. let's focus on the 100. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so the ring's 69, yeah. which for a ruby and diamond is not a bad price. Not bad. Um, no. So we could maybe do that for 60. OK, so that would be... So if we said 160 for the two, yeah. are you happy at that? I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think both. that's very fair. Yeah. I'm... Do we have a deal? We Delighted. have a deal. Absolutely. Fantastic. We've got 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60. There we go. £160. Lovely job. All for you. Thank you very Thank much. You. That's wonderful. Do you think I could try this on? It would be rude not to, definitely. Yeah. Try before you buy. <laughs> Thank you Thanks so much. much. And with that, Christina is done. 
but she'll have to wait for our lost boy, who is still in Sirencester. This is interesting, what have we got here? So we've got a 14th or 15th century spur. I find that quite amazing. And I love when the spikes are still rotating and they've been rotating for four or 500, 600 years. I love this decoration as well. Quite often they're just plain, the spurs. And this one has got some nice decoration along here with the crisscross decoration and lines as well. You just wonder where it's been, who's had it on their foot, where they rode on their horse. Could have even been in a battle with Henry VII. You never know. <laughs> Amazing, isn't that? I think it's great. Oh, crumbs. Time. I'm meant to be at the next shop, Christina. Ooh. Um, what sort of price is it? 55 quid. I could do the spur for 45. OK. I'd probably squeeze the coin to 100. Let's go for it. 100 quid the coin, 45 the spurs. It's a deal. Sounds good. Thanks very much. No worries. Excellent. I'm really pleased. Well. We're glad you're pleased. <sighs> oh dear. Christina doesn't look so pleased. Hello? Timothy James Medhurst, where have I'm you sorry. been? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Just I got me the first road trip where I lost anybody. It's shut. Uh, yes, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, they left about <laughs> five hours ago. <laughs> oh, have you done all right? Yes, thank Good. you. Well, have you got some coins? And finally, tell me you I found can't tell some you. coins. Secret, isn't it? After all that, <laughs> you're hopeless. Right, come on, right. you're super duper late. Come, come on, on in the car. Go, go. All's well that ends well, eh? And it's nearly time for the final chapter in our tale. We're off to Wales. Au revoir, Cotswolds. Borrowed our Wales. Which way is it? We... Um, I'm guessing. Is it back that way? I, know, I might be. Is it up there? No. I think it must be down here somewhere. OK, we'll find it. As ever. They'll get there eventually, after some shut-eye. The sun shines on the righteous, and it's splitting the sky today over historic Cardiff, a latecomer to capital city status which was officially bestowed in 1955. Our sunny pair are on their way to their final auction, if they can find it, of course. We're in the right place. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are, though. Ah, auctioneers and valuers, here we Fantastic. are. Yes, this is the place, classily named Anthemian Auctions. Oh, my goodness, can you believe this is it? I know, here we are. I know, from rainy Somerset to sunny, beautiful Wales. This is it. I know, and it's busy in there as well. Oh, it is very busy. Might be our day. <laughs> Ever the optimists. Mr Money finally bought a coin, spending a total of £280 on five lots. It's just fantastic, this marbled agate ware. Unfortunately, it does have a little bit of damage to the knot there and the spout, but for me, just absolutely gorgeous. While Mrs Moneybags herself spent less than half her available cash, £340 on her five lots, including the silver table lighters. They're quite damaged, they are battered, but they are a bit of novelty. And anybody that knows me knows I love a bit of novelty. They're by Walker & Hall, a good maker, and I think they'll do all right. Our auctioneer today is Ryan Beach. What's caught his eye? James I shilling, nice early coin, rare coin. Condition is so important when you're looking at, at, at coins like this. I think it'll make probably 50, 80 pounds, something like that. The Egyptian-inspired picture frame is fantastic. You know, it's a real statement piece, but you've got to have the right room for it to go into. I reckon probably 80, 120 pounds, but uh, we'll have to see. Right, time for Tim and Christina to take their seats. Oh, my goodness, can you believe it? I know, it's exciting, isn't it? It's really exciting. Our last auction. I know. Yes, it is. And we're off now with the first lot, Christina's ruby and diamond eternity ring. There's a tumbleweed. More so. Tumbleweed. <laughs> We've got 40. It's like a lifeline. Ooh. I'm not secretly really happy at all. There are lots of jewellery buyers here, so I'm surprised they're not going for it. I mean, beautiful. Oh, we're going. Oh, two pound increments, I love it. <laughs> Scrabbling to make a profit somewhere. Oh, he's worth it. Oh dear, hard luck. <laughs> you could say it with a little bit more meaning. <laughs> OK, sorry, I can't. I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> I bet you are, but a bad start for Our Lady of the Rubies. I'm glad I bought it. Yeah. That was a pretty thing. Time now for Tim's James the Sixth shilling. That's James the First to viewers in England. It's coin time. 
Oh dear, Sweetheart. what a disappointment. Do you know what, though? I'm really pleased that I bought a coin on the road trip. Though. Yeah. Just not this one, eh? Maybe all that burning of witches caused bad karma. Exactly. And it was a nice one to buy. Good period of history. But don't get accused of witchcraft. Up now, Christina's silver table lighters. Start me at 150 for this one, please. 150, what? start me. Yeah, 150, I've got straight silver that. 150, 50 pounds, 160. He's done it again. 50 pounds. 160 pounds. <laughs> well done. Sorry. 160. She's quadrupled her cash. Awesome. Well done. Happy days. I'm really sorry. Tim Spur is next. 50 to spur you on then. Yes. 50 pounds. 50 pounds. 40 pounds, I'll take that. Oh, Tim, oh, what is no, going, that? going on? 40 pounds is that. Going down again. Oh. There's a pound of Oh, what? Oh, no. Many people stir here. We've got 20 pound on the internet. Oh, no. Just to get started, come on. That's a mercy bed. 20 pound on the internet at 20 pounds. Oh, no. A disappointing loss there. Never mind. It'll make someone happy. See, I'm afraid they all thought what I was thinking. What? That's right. Kick a man when he's down. Time now for Christina's print in the carved frame. Lovely frame on this one. Hundred pounds starting. Oh, he's picking it up. Tumbleweed. Eighty to get it underway then. Tumbleweed time. Eighty pound. I have to eighty. Well done. Standing at eighty pound. Lady standing at eighty now. And eighty pound. Are we all done then? The bit of eighty pounds. It is still technically a loss. It is, but not of biblical proportions. <laughs> I still buy it again. I yeah. think that's the main thing, isn't it? I love it. <laughs> Bubbling up now, Tim's silver-mounted glass inkwells. 50 pounds starting somebody. Yeah, come on. 40 then, let's oh. get the other way. 40, I have. Oh, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, no, great spot. I like those very, very much. Mm. Well done. Fair or stormy? It's Christina's 1915 brass barometer now. 80 pounds, sir. Silence Nobody cares about my little barometer. It's a good name, the Gretian Zambra. It's a really good name. Wrong name. 40 pounds, sir. 40 pounds, sir. 40 pounds, sir. He's got 40. It's a start. Oh. It'll start climbing now. Five. We're up to 45. 50. I've got 50 now. There we are. That's a great loss. <laughs> it was an ill wind, perhaps. The beans, I think she said. Ah. Not your biggest loss. No, not the biggest loss. So I won't worry too much. It's ever hopeful Tim's Victorian glass paperweight next. Now, I paid £25 for my salt paperweight. Arf. It's a lion. Oh, is it? It's, it's not a dog. dog. <laughs> Start me at £20. £20 Come on. It's a good paperweight. Oh, oh. It's got a dog Ten lion in it. Salt it's, dog. Dog. it's carnage. Five hundred thousand going there. Anybody interested? Five pound. Five pound is that? He's bidding. He's bidding. You've got salvation over there. I've got five in the corner. Five pound in the corner. Oh, five. Are we all done? Okay. And oh, no. I surrender. <laughs> <laughs> Completely defeated. I think it could be modern. I think we could probably say it's probably not your day. It's not my day. This yeah. is not my day. I wish I could disagree. 
Time for Christina's last lot now, the carved mahogany dressing table mirror. You as commission bids here, start me straight in at 15, 80, 100, 110 pounds to start. 110 pounds. <laughs> £110 with me there. And £110 with me at £110. Oh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, you, you haven't made it. Oh, well. Uh, mirror, mirror on the wall. £110. Who's made the most money off them all? <laughs> Christina. And that's her third profit today, if a very tiny one. That was a nice surprise. Wasn't yeah. It? Yeah, didn't expect that. Is a large profit brewing for Tim's last lot, the agate ware style teapot? £100, I say. Oh, £100? £100. £100. £100. He's asking £100. He's on the phone. £100 on the telephone, straight to the £100 on the telephone. Let's celebrate. Right, I'm getting round in. I'm too happy. Oh, thank you, telephone bidder. £100, that's Very fantastic. Good. I'm pleased. Me too. A fine profit to finish. You know, it has been an absolute joy oh, being with you same. this week. My little bro. Oh, I know, you're like my big sister now. Not so big. Um, well, sort of my sister. Thank you. <laughs> right, come on. Time for a final tally. Tim was riding high, but even after today's losses, he still trots home from his first ever road trip with a very respectable £296.46. So well done, boy. Christina has kept her nose out in front today, making a profit of just over £33 after sale room fees. She finishes several furlongs ahead with £890.64p across the trip. All profits go to children in need. Excellent work. Oh, my goodness, oh, Timothy. The ups and downs of the antique world. Ups and downs, the ups, oh. the plateaus. Amazing. What an amazing trip. What an amazing week. Oh, Seriously. Med so first, much fun. the brave. <laughs> <laughs> and you made loads of money. Yeah, well, I've left with more than I came with. What more could you ask? And you've for? left with a lot more than you came with. Yeah, well, <laughs> like I say, watch let's, and learn. Let's watch go and learn. explore Cardiff. Yeah. Cheerio. Goodbye to a week of sunshine. <laughs> Showers. There they go. Look at that. Wow! Four legged friends. Hi, Dinky Doo! <laughs> Whee! Oh. Highs. <laughs> Double money already. I've never done a deal standing on top of a piece of furniture before. Oof. Didn't see that there. Lows. Ah, oh, I surrender. <laughs> and a golden egg. Well done. Fantastic. Oh Happy days, eh? <laughs> <laughs>